welcome. I'm Rami Niranjan Desai, and my guest for this interview today is Dr. Satoru Nagao. Dr. Nagao's primary research area is US Japan India Security Corporation, and he is a non resident fellow at Hudson Institute uh, based in Tokyo, Japan, and uh, previously was a visiting scholar at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. He was also a security analyst at uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and a first lieutenant of the Japan Ground Self-Defense Forces. Dr. Nagao has authored numerous books and articles on key security issues, and we welcome him today as he joins us to discuss Japan's new security strategy. Dr. Nagao, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to join this program. Thank you, Dr. Nagao. We're very happy to have you on. Um, let me, right at the outset, talk about uh, Japan's newly released national security strategy and uh, defense planning documents. Uh, uh, it's Everybody's been talking about it. Uh, the strategy is Japan's first in nearly 10 years, I believe, and only its second ever. Um, the strategy also seems to navigate the country's response to uh, significant changes in the regional and global security environment and seems to also reflect on Japan's growing sense of vulnerability maybe vis-a-vis -vis its immediate neighbors. But how do you think, let me ask you, that, that Japan's new security policy, how do you think it's going to change the country's sense of itself? Okay, yeah, I think it's a very positive move. This is practical. There are three pillars of the new security strategy, I think. The first one is uh, which country is a threat. And second one is uh, who approach uh, to deal with the threat. And the third one is uh, to deal with the threat. International cooperation is very important. I will explain the more and the one by one. Which country is a threat? The last time when the Japan published uh, national security strategy, that was 2030, just after the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe sworn in in 2012 uh, that time. Uh, despite uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe strongly emphasized China, 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 China is a threat, because when he published the articles, Asia's uh, democratic security diamond, which how important Kuwait, he mentioned about China is a threat. Despite this, the uh, Japanese government still hesitate to say China is a uh, threat. So in the 2030s, when we order the which country is a threat, first one is North Korea, second one is China. Uh, in Japanese uh, way of life is uh, uh, first, second, third, from top, uh, uh, this is order of the priority. So last time, North Korea and China is the uh, order, uh, but this time, uh, 2022 version of the national security strategy mentioned China, North Korea, Russia. So this means that China is the first priority. So this has uh, changed uh, since 2030. So that is uh, one of the important pillar. Second pillar is who approach, what kind of the, uh, things I want to say. Uh, maybe India cannot believe the Japanese uh, cooperation for defense. Indeed, the uh, Ministry of Defense takes charge of the defense, but the Ministry of the Education Science or the Minist uh, Ministry of the Economic uh, Industry, uh, they believe the defense is not their job. And in the academics, academics uh, strongly believe the defense-related uh, issue. They are one kind of the fortress of the pacifist. So that's why the Ministry of Defense or Self Defense Force, or the, maybe some certain number of the government officials are isolated, and they only they, their efforts to defend Japan is only effort of the uh, total effort of Japan. So in this national security strategy, the this new version asked other society, other ministries, other society of the people should cooperate, should mm. cooperate the uh, defense of Japan. For example, the academics should cooperate to, to develop the new uh, equipment for the defense forces. Um, of course, academics strongly oppose such kind of move, but uh, 
in other countries. This is common, not only in China, but also the US, but also India. The yes. scientists cooperate uh, with uh, national defense. That is natural and common way. And this time, Japanese government tried to say clearly, you should cooperate. But that is the full approach, the second feature. Third feature is uh, indeed very, very important international cooperation. Japan decided to possess the counter strike capability. Counter strike capability, yes, this is the Japanese way. Uh, when the they, uh, uh, enemy attack, Japan will retaliate. Japan can attack the missile part when the enemy launch a missile. Uh, that is natural in India or other country, but uh, indeed, this is not merely uh, the Japan's policy. Indeed, currently, not only Japan, but also India, but also the Australia, but also the Taiwan, South Korea, Vietnam, Philippines, all of these countries try to possess strike capability. Why this is, uh, why? so that is why I need to say this counter strike capability is a part of the international cooperation. <laughs> Uh, when all these countries possess the strike capability, what will happen? China cannot forget one of these countries when they want to co want to concentrate their military forces. For example, the, when they try to invade Taiwan, they need to worry about the backside. Yes, India's strike capability. Wow. When they decide to attack India, situation is same. They need to worry about the Pacific side. If all of these countries possess the strike capability at the same time. So now Japan decided to join this move to possess the strike capability under the name of counter strike capability. So that is part of the international cooperation. And secondly, when we check the national security strategy, uh, important sentences exist inside. Um, strategic use of ODA and so Japan will establish a new framework to cooperate with other armed forces. ODA is concentrated, no military support, but uh, Japan will use this as a strategic move. And um, secondly, new approach, new framework is very important because ODA is no military use. So this means that uh, for support, to support uh, military force of the other country, Japan needs a new framework, and uh, this national security strategy mentioned about it. We will establish a new framework. So this means that, along with the counter-strike capability, this new approach of the ODA and the new framework is also part of the international cooperation. So this national security strategy is a real strategy to deal with the threat of China. Now it's just the beginning, but this is very good. Thank you. Sorry, the explanation is a little wrong. <laughs> no, that's excellent. Uh, that's a deep dive into what the uh, security strategy envisions to do. And of course, it's been a, a much needed sort of an effort. But having said that, there's always been uh, some resistance. You know, this is a major break from, uh, you know, Japan's recent tradition and its explicit commitment after the Second World War. Um, how has the youth of Japan accepted this? And uh, what do you think has changed in the recent years that a document that is so robust could be brought in? Oh, interesting point. But uh, yes, in Japan, the young people are the major supporter of the, such kind of the new uh, strategic move. Uh, for example, the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, originally they, they tried to change the, uh, Japan's national security strategy. So that's why the, he was the first Prime Minister to publish this document in 2030. And uh, since that time, uh, when we checked uh, who supports Prime Minister Shinzo Abe or Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's security policy, we can identify younger people support Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the 40s, 30s, the 20s, or teens. When we check the, um, um, their opinion, relatively they support the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, but the uh, 50s, the 60s, the more senior one um, dislikes his policy. So younger people relatively support the current government policy, uh, current government uh, new approach of the uh, security strategy. But uh, senior, senior one, uh, they are based on the traditional pacifism. 
uh, try to resist this policy. That's uh, what happened in Japan. Uh, so younger generation or not is not uh, my younger generation uh, will be the major force in the future. So in this case, in the future, the support I will increase. We expect. So, but at the same time, to deal with the current situation, the government need to get the su more support from the seniors. That's true. And uh, but at the same time, the why younger generation relatively support uh, current change? Because they know they know the current problem related to China. In the past, uh, when the Japan need to deal with the threat from Soviet Union, the, since the 1970s, the U.S.-China relation has improved, and uh, China is relatively friend for Japan. But after that, situation has changed. Currently, China is the main threat. So younger generation was born after China changed from the relatively cooperative country to the threat. So <laughs> they accept the threat of China. And when we check the pattern of the China's territory expansion, indeed, this policy is very good. This new policy based on the new national security strategy is very good. Why? Because when we check what happened in South China Sea, we can identify this is right. Well, there is a pattern of the China's territory expansion. In 19, okay, 1950s, 1950s, when France withdrew from Indochina Peninsula, the China took the half of the Paracelo Island. In 1970s, after the Vietnam War, the U.S. withdrew from Vietnam. After that, China take another half of the Paracelo Island. Mm -hmm. In 1990s, when the uh, uh, 1980s, 1980s, when the Soviet troops withdrew from the Vietnam, uh, the reducing number uh, still stay, but uh, reducing number of uh, the Soviet troops in Vietnam, China expand uh, the activity in the Spiratory Island and uh, occupy the six features. And in 1990s, when the U.S. forces withdraw from Philippines, China take mischief reef. So when they find the power vacuum based on changing the military balance, they take it. If so, what should they do? What should the country around China do? In this case, maintaining military balance do not create the power vacuum is the solution to deal with China's territory expansion. But to maintain military balance, the uh, what, defense budget, uh, we need more defense budget because uh, according to the CIPRI, CIPRI is a think tank in the Sweden, but according to the database of the CIPRI, China has increased the military expenditure 76% between the 2011 to 2020. During the same period, Japan increased 2.4%. 2.4? In the case of the United States, U.S. decreased 10%. So 76 versus 2.4 or 10%, defense budget is not enough. It is clear. So, but the uh, situation has changed because Russia's aggression uh, against Ukraine has happened and uh, people's mindset has changed in Japan. Uh, wow, real war has happened. Oh, this is a uh, real world. Oh, I will start to understand. We need to increase the defense budget. That's why, that's why the, Japanese government has the courage to publish their policy as a national security strategy in front of people. People start to understand we need to increase our defense budget. That is the uh, current situation. So some media or some the traditional pacifists try to resist this policy, but indeed it will happen, I think. It will have already decided and already got some certain number of the support in Japan. That's my answer. Thank you. That's uh, that's very interesting because that would be a huge shift, you know, in just the general perception of Japan and the Japanese people towards uh, counter uh, defense and counter strike uh, capabilities. But having said that, Dr. Nagao, could you? Tell us a little bit more on, we've also seen a lot of uh, adverse comments coming from China. We've seen adverse comments coming from North Korea. Uh, how does this impact Japan's uh, security policy? Uh, and how does Japan see these comments? Um, okay, uh, I have already introduced the uh, database of the CIPRIs. Uh, during the China increased 76 percent, Japan only increased 2.4 percent. If so, even if Japan will not 
increase the defense budget, what will happen? China will increase the defense budget anyway. So mm. this is not a move. This is not a move to uh, push China to increase uh, military budget. Anyway, they will increase the military budget, military expenditure, and provoking us. So we need to catch up. That's why we try to catch up. So China and North Korea will not accept the situation, even if they expect it, the uh, Japan will increase. So that's why the, it is impossible uh, to achieve the mutual understanding in this case. Maybe both sides increase the defense budget. That is destiny. And we cannot escape of this situation. That is the reason this is part of the security dilemma. That's true. But at the same time, dilemma, why dilemma? Because we cannot escape. Right, right. So how does this then impact uh, Japan's relationship with, let's say, uh, you know, the US? You know, does this security policy suggest that Japan no longer has the kind of faith it did uh, or it used to have on American protection? Of course. We should not overestimate Japan's change too much because, uh, for example, if Japan will possess the Tomahawk cruise missile, uh, well, yes, this is a strike capability like the United States, but we need the United States because this Tomahawk cruise missile rely on the guidance of the GPS satellite. GPS satellite is the U.S. system. So this strike capability rely on U.S. system. Uh, missile defense system also, the other system also. So this Japan's move is a part of international cooperation and especially U.S. lead international cooperation. So that's why this is not an independent move. And uh, Japan need to deal with China. In this case, if Japan try to deal with China alone, that's not, that's not uh, practical. Because China's GDP is three times uh, higher than the Japan's one now. In this, and uh, yeah, indeed, 10 years ago, the GDP was the same. Uh, between Japan and China, but uh, China increased very fast pace. And so last decade, China increased uh, uh, three times uh, three times bigger uh, mm -hmm. than uh, 10 years ago. So this means that now Ch Japan needs to deal with three China uh, at the same time. Uh, so under certain situation, if Japan try to defend themselves alone, this is not practical. And I mean, it's three times bigger than one uh, than, uh, than the 10 years ago. So this is part of the international cooperation, not the independent move. So we should not overestimate Japan change in this case. Great, Ed. So if this is a part of international cooperation that we also come to uh, bodies like the Quad, uh, how does the new security policy transform Japan's role on the Indo-Pacific and in key Indo-Pacific uh, areas? Yes, uh, it will uh, be because uh, Japan Japan will use the ODA the uh, as a strategic uh, purpose, uh, and uh, Japan uh, will establish a new framework to support uh, armed forces of the other countries. So uh, this means that uh, even if Japan is declining power, the aging population, the declining the resources we can use. Jap because of the easing, easing the restriction Japan imposed ourselves, and because of the Japan try to try to show our presence uh, in the security field, Japan will show the good performance as a security provider of the country around China. That is uh, maybe we will see in the near future, I think. But at the same time, how to deal with, with uh, maybe a big problem? And in this case, uh, I think uh, maybe it will happen is view from the China territory, part of the China territory expansion I have already mentioned. Indeed, uh, my, indeed uh, there are the three things, three features uh, the China territory expansion has. For example, the first one is lack of respect of the international law. So, uh, for example, the in, uh, in the East China Sea, uh, in the 1970s, that was the turning point. Before the 1970s, China did not claim the Senkaku Island as their territory. But uh, once they realized that this is a good location to uh, make pressure to Taiwan or uh, there is a natural resources in the sea, uh, uh, that, since the 1970s, they start to uh, claim 
the Senkaku Island as their territory. This means that lack of respect to the international law is one of the pattern of China. So then the other part in South China Sea is um, they do not respect the international court. To, um, or uh, in the India China border, uh, they ignore the traditional uh, line of the border. Uh, they try to expand, expand, expand the India side. So, lack of respect to international is quite obvious. And second feature of the China territory expansion is uh, expansion the territory based on the power vacuum. And uh, I have already mentioned about this by using the example of what happened in the South China Sea. And the third feature is uh, Indeed, uh, attempt at economic dominance or other non-military method to expand influence is another feature. Uh, indeed, uh, what happened in Djibouti? The Djibouti has a huge debt to China, and they rent uh, uh, territory uh, for the, uh, mil China's military base. So that uh, was the first uh, military base uh, uh, for China uh, abroad. And uh, but, uh, at the same time, what happened in the Hanban Dota port in Sri Lanka, what happened in the airport in Uganda, every time uh, China's way is based on non-military method. Uh, but uh, indeed, uh, this is one of the steps to deploy the China's military. So to deal with this kind of the three features we need to do, and the Japan were focusing on, so what should we do? So we should do the opposite of what, of the, what China wants, um, respecting the rule-based order, maintaining the military balance, and the integrate the military and the non-military policy as a overall strategy. That is a clear method to complete the opposite uh, uh, of what China wants. So that is a clear policy, and Japan will do with other like-minded countries, India, the US, Australia, or uh, in the Southeast Asian countries, or uh, the European country also, uh, that will happen, I think. And uh, indeed, this year, yeah, no, not this year, this year is 2022, 2023, and India will take charge of the G20, and Japan will take charge of the presidency of the G7, indeed. So India and Japan cooperate each other and show how important rule-based order, how important maintaining the current military balance, or how important uh, integrates uh, military and non-military method to deter war. Uh, that kind of thing is very important. Uh, so 2023 will be bright if India and Japan cooperate each other. That's uh, my answer to your question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nagao. As we come close to the end of our interview, uh, I'd like to really thank you for deep diving into uh, what this new security strategy means globally and for Japan. But let me just ask you one last question. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis Taiwan, uh, Japan's position, uh, where would you place it? Uh, simply said, uh, Japan will not abandon Taiwan even if the uh, Japanese government uh, did not, uh, haven't uh, said like that. Because uh, traditionally, Japan and Taiwan is connected. Uh, so people believe that the Taiwan and the Chinese continent side is connected well, but uh, that's not the only connection Taiwan has. And at the same time, the, under the US-China competition, Taiwan is uh, too important for the United States. So US will not abandon Taiwan. And Japan, as a ally of the United States, Japan will not uh, abandon the Taiwan. And indeed, 100 kilometers is the distance between Japan and Taiwan uh, geographically. So that's why Japan cannot escape this conflict. Too. So under such kind of the condition, Japan will not abandon Taiwan, I think. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nagao. I think, uh, you know, this is really deep diving into some of the things that have been on everybody's mind, including how Japan perceives its own new security strategy. But uh, I believe some surveys have said almost 60, there's almost over 60% support for the new counter-strike capabilities, which is a historic shift. So thank you very much for taking us through this. And I really appreciate your time. And thank you everyone for watching. We will be bringing you many such interviews with key people, policymakers, and experts. So stay, stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you.